Hey everyone, I'm Daniel from Teach Kids Robotics, and in this lesson, we'll be covering how does a robot decide what to do? An introduction to planning, heuristics, and cost maps. So, how does a robot decide what to do? From our first lesson, we determined a robot is a goal-oriented machine. And with mobile robots, the goal often revolves around moving between points in a map. But there are often multiple ways to move between two places. So how do we pick which path to take? Consider, for example, if you've used Google Maps, and you can see there are multiple routes getting you from a starting location to your destination. How do you determine which one of these routes is best? So we can choose to take either the shortest path or the fastest path, or the path that avoids toll roads. But for all of these, there is a metric we are trying to optimize. For the shortest path, we want to minimize the length of the path. For fastest time, we want to minimize the duration of a path. This allows us to mathematically compare best possible paths and choose what is best for that metric, whether it be distance or time or cost. Now, in mobile robotics, this field is known as path planning. Path planning answers the question, of how does a robot travel between two points in its map optimally. And it does so with the help of something known as a heuristic. The heuristic is the property that helps guide the search to get the best path. And that can encode information such as cost or time, or a preference in this example here, getting from the start to the goal point, we can see two different paths, but one has significantly less turns, or the other, also decides to stay closer to walls for longer periods of time. Now in path planning, we have something known as a cost function, which can help determine the best path from a start to a goal point by encoding costs at different parts of our map. And using this cost function, we can help encode information about where we would or would not like to travel. For example, an obstacle can have a high cost associated with it, so that as we are determining how to travel between the map, if we are attempting to reduce the cost of a path, we would avoid any kind of obstacle. So this cost function allows us really to determine the path planning behavior and the path we're going to take. And a map with a cost function applied to each point inside is known as a cost map, and we can use this cost map to find a least cost path between two points in the map that we wish to travel between. And we will use this cost function to find the best or the lowest cost path between the two points. And we have a visualization here of what a map looks like with a cost map equivalent. And you can see, for example, we have additional costs indicated by the darker purple colors associated with being near an obstacle and the free space is at lower cost, indicating we prefer to move in this area. Now, consider we have this cost function. We want to be able to actually determine how do we get from point A to point B in the map. And to do so, we use something known as a search function, which basically attempts to find a path between the two points on the map. And this path is found basically uh, in an exploratory manner. And there are different kind of search functions that have different behavior, which result in trade-offs in optimality, which is whether or not the path found is actually the shortest or the best, depending on what your metric is. And we can see these two path approaches visualized, one always attempting to minimize the distance to the path on the left, and the other simply testing every possible path until it finds the goal in order to determine what the shortest path actually is. Now, returning to our cost function, by adding costs when we're doing this calculation to determine the shortest path, by finding the shortest path, we actually found the lowest cost path between points because we can, we can consider distance also like a weight or a cost. 
and by finding the shortest path between two points or the shortest distance, we also find the shortest cost between those two points. The next step, once a robot knows where it is in the map, it's decided it has a start and a goal point, it's found what it considers the best path is from that start to goal point in its map, it actually needs to figure out how it can realize that planned path in the real world using the motors available to it. This final piece is known as trajectory planning or motion planning and reconciles how a robot is actually able to move with what the plan was for the robot to move. And this allows us to close the gap between the robot's perception of the world and its movement in the real world. Using another real world example, we return to the NASA Valkyrie robot. And every possible combination of ways that the robot could move uh, is captured in what we call the configuration space. And path planning or trajectory planning determines how to actually move the robot in this configuration space. Consider that this robot here has different axes of rotation highlighted in red. What this means is the robot is limited in how it can move. Perhaps its arm can only move up or down. As a result, if the plan dictates that the robot move in a curve-like manner, there has to be some reconciliation that takes place as the robot needs to essentially move maybe its torso as it moves its arm up and down in order to achieve this curve-like direction that was planned in the configuration space. So that concludes pretty much the ex explanation of how does a robot decide what to do. Normally, the robot has some sort of heuristic or some sort of cost it's trying to reduce. And it has this cost map that it's moving or operating in. And it would like to find the optimal way to move between two points in that cost map. It uses a search function to find that path in its cost map and then translates that planned path into the real world using motion planning or trajectory planning. Once again, this is more of a specific use case to mobile robots, and different kind of robots have different systems in place. But for mobile robots, you'll often see these cost maps dictating how they move and determine how to move between two points on the map. So, let me know, what else would you like to learn about robotics? Feel free to leave a comment below and check out the links in the description for other robotics kit and information. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. This video has been brought to you by Teach Kids Robotics. You can visit us at teachkidsrobotics.com to check out other information and blog posts regarding robotics. Additionally, we offer curated lists of STEM kits in order for you to try robotics at home. Check out the link in the description.